Well, let's talk footy from the weekend, MG. After round two, a few surprises on the ladder. Uh, what are you enjoying seeing on the ladder at the moment? Yeah, if you look at the top four teams, Newcastle are leading the competition after two rounds. Penrith, Brisbane are in the top four and the Melbourne Storm. Uh, round out the, the four teams who are yet to be beaten on the on the other end of the scale if you turn the ladder upside down South Sydney not yet to win mm-hmm. Warriors yet to win Tigers yet to win and Manly who started the season last year zero from four are zero from two as well okay well let's get into uh, the games uh, one of the big stories of the weekend was the drama around concussion and sin bins MG are the refs getting a little bit whistle happy for the start of the season I, I will cut them some slack as as I'll cut the players some slack as well who are just kind of finding their way in these opening stanzas of the season because there is a couple of rule changes you've got to get used to there was an incident against Penrith and uh, the Dragons where I thought the Dragons were hard done by when Jaden Sewer got Simbin for a, for an act that should never have been Simbin this is how it went down will be another whistle for the contact on the Panthers halfback see how late it is now Putting the halfback on notice. You're going to come into the line. This is what's going to happen. So it's a tackle on a player without the ball. It's in the bin. He is too. Gee, I didn't think it was that late, but anyway, trying to protect the halves. Yeah, they scored two tries, the Panthers, while he was off. So that was a, a, a cruel blow. And yeah, it's somewhat they are paged at the moment. The HIA, which we'll discuss more with later on with the Golden Points, I think they've just got to be a little bit cautious of, of acting too harshly because the bunker's getting involved way too much at the moment for mine. Also, MG, how frustrated would you be if you were Tommy Turbo? Manly went down to the Roosters Friday night, 0-2 um, yep. to the start of the season. Now, is it time for Manly to start hitting the panic button, given that <sighs> you know, so many teams are shutting out Tommy? Somewhat, Jessica, you would say, um, because last year they were 0 from 4, um, but they didn't have Tommy Turbo playing, so we're waiting for him to come back. And when he come back, I think they won 6 from 7 or something in a row. So the concerning thing is that he's playing. And they're still losing. I think it's more a onus on the forwards from Manly to start rolling your sleeves up, boys. Protect um, him. Tommy Turbo can't do all the hard work. He can't be in 13 positions at once. So um, I want his forwards to start you know, getting a little bit more muscle so Tommy can have some freedom. What about the Tigers, MG? Round one, they're actually sort of respectable against the Storm yeah. and looked okay, but against the Knights on the weekend, they were bad. They, um, they went back to their bad ways, Paigey. They yeah. went back to their bad ways against the Knights. The Knights were good. Let, yep. Let's not take anything away from them, but the Tigers were woeful. Um, Tyrone Pesci Sim Binning kind of summed up their whole day um, when he was acting captain at the time. He hit the ball out of the hooker's hands and spent time in the bin. Um, look, there will be the drums will be beating, obviously for for Madge Maguire. They play the Warriors this weekend, and they would probably say to themselves, or, and a lot of our, our uh, external noise will say, "You got to beat the Warriors, or you're in trouble." Mm-hmm. Let him go, mm-hmm. let him go, let let Madge go. Don't let don't sack him. Just let him, let, him, let him fight. Let him try and fight. I'm sick of coaches getting sacked and clubs just don't let them fight. Let him fight. He's got Tim Sheens on, in his bank now, so just let him go. I mean, they don't have this speculation all year that Magic's going to get sacked. Just, mm. Let's just ease off him a bit. They need to play him that Frozen song, but let him go. Let him let go. It go. Let, let know. it go. Let him spread his wings. Leave, leave the kid alone. <laughs> Um, and Adam Reynolds, he finally oh. made his long away to debut for the Broncos. Now, you tipped against the Broncos, didn't you, MG? I did. I did. What did you make? And were you surprised uh, of his performance and his combo with Albert Kelly? He was good. He was really, really good. Uh, he added some, some much-needed, you know, luster to their, to their attack. So, so much experience. Um, I, I like the fact that they, this was a game yesterday that I really enjoyed. I enjoyed the fact that these two teams probably won't make the eight this year, but I think in, next year they both definitely will. I just love what I'm seeing. Tavita Pengai Jr. was put in the middle um, late at late notice. His first 15 minutes were a little bit volatile, but then he came back on. He was one of the better forwards on the on the field. Um, again, a couple of contentious stripping um, strips from from the the Broncos over the Doggies, which led to a try for Farnworth. But um, all in all, I think it was a fantastic game, and uh, I'm really looking forward to watching these two teams play. The Broncos are zero, uh, uh, four, four points, two wins from two games. Yeah. Wow, who the fun? <laughs> Did you like that performance from Tavita Pangai Jr.? I know he was in the middle for a lot of the game there. Has he found a sweet spot of uh, aggression versus self-control? I hope so. I, I, I hope so, because he could be such an X-factor for the Doggies. Such an X factor. I, I love the way that you know they've got him and Hetherington on each edge. Both, both very aggressive players. At, on their day, they can be they can be game uh, game breakers. So, yeah, I, I do, Paige. I like the fact that Trent Barrett changed um, before the game and put him in the middle. So let's just see how it how it plays out. Goal!
MG's Golden Points. Bluebet's four-point halftime early payout. Available on NRL games in rounds one to four. T's and C's apply. Yes, every Monday right yeah. here, it's time for MG's Golden Points as we have a look at round two of the NRL from the weekend. MG, let's kick it off with your most impressive team of the round. I can't go past uh, two teams, Pedro, the Cowboys and the Knights. Mm. They were both epic. Um, the Cowboys showed that with a bit of grit in defence, um, anything could happen. The Raiders were disappointing, but uh, yeah, the Cowboys and the Knights were my, my two most impressive teams of that, round two. That's unreal. And how good is the game? Did you ever think after round two, you'd be sitting here going, my two most impressive teams are the Cowboys and the Knights at the start? No. No. That's awesome. I yeah. love the competition. I love footy. <laughs> well, there's a few surprises there. Who is your most surprising team of the round, MG? Oh, I want to say the Dragons. Yeah. I'm going to say the Dragons. I like, I like what I'm seeing from the Dragons. I like, you know, as I spoke about earlier with Sua, um, getting Simbin and, and Lomax, they had a couple of players in the bin who shouldn't have been there, and they they took on the Premiers and they took them on well. Um, Penrith had to dig deep to win this game, and I, I like what the Dragons had to offer. And the coach, Hook Griffin, bounced back really nicely from that train wreck interview we did with him last week where Jess yeah. mentioned Barbecue Gate and how <laughs> she, <laughs> loves, <laughs> she loves sausages and he pretended his phone line had cut Hopefully out. Hopefully we'll so. get him on <laughs> maybe in 2024 for another chat. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to support him. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Hook. Like, um, barbecues are delicious. MG, your most disappointing team of round two. Uh, yesterday, the Tigers were very disappointing, as were the Raiders, who I just spoke of. Enough said about these two teams, because they need to lift and lift quickly. And your biggest issue from round two? Well, it's got to be the penalties for the um, the sim binnings, you know, of, 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 of players that don't know. Victor Radley, something happened to him as well that shouldn't have been penalised. They're just getting a little bit trigger happy. As I mentioned earlier in the show, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, the officials, because I'm giving underperforming players and coaches the benefit of the doubt, because it's early days in the NRL. But... Um, I still don't like the idea of this doctor being in the bunker um, and not at the ground. I think it's got to change. I think we've got a um, HIA is, an, is, a, is a big issue, um, but I'm seeing players getting replaced that have nothing to do with a head issue. Or, or uh, on the weekend, um, often in Gowrie from the Tigers had a, a cut on his eye and he got put in the, in the HIA. Yeah. Um, we, we, we've got a it's grey area at the moment. We can't have it grey. We need it black and white. Uh, a few listener questions. If you want to ask MG a question, you can jump on our socials and do so. Conks Lisa. Hey, Conks Lisa. Hey, Conksy. How are you, babe? She wants to know, what do you think went wrong with the Eels? Uh, it's their defence at the moment. Um, both games, they've leaked big points. Uh, the Sharkies, um, 18 points against them um, and, and got out of jail. I think they should have won that game, the Eels. They should have put them to bed um, and the week before against the Titans that was basically a triathlon so this has got to, they've got to get more stern around the uh, the, the middle middle of their ruck uh, in defence the Eels they'll be right they're, they're okay the Prime Minister was excited did you see ScoMo oh, carrying yeah. on like an absolute goose <laughs> did he at that game what made a real doing? ass of himself what was he doing <laughs> oh, throwing his scarf around in the air oh, and everything come like on, that come on he's trying to sit down god he's relatable isn't he mm. go on yeah. uh, <laughs> Another listener question, Josh Sec01 has asked, MG, what do you think of Nathan Cleary and Ivan Cleary's lifetime deal at the Panthers that's being reported? Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah, look, they've, they're in negotiations. As I, I found out, I think Michael Chamis broke this news yesterday. And um, if it's true, I love it. I'd love, I'd love, I'd love Nathan Cleary to be a one-club man. And I think um, Ivan Cleary has shown that he's, you know, by coaching a, a grand final winning team last year, he's got the credentials and he's... Uh, He's a good coach. So, yeah, as long as they can lock these two up, the better for the mountain men, for, in my opinion. What does a lifetime deal look like? Does it mean that you can retire on your own terms? Do you say, uh, well, well, Ivan can both... coach forever. I mean, well, Nathan can right. play yeah. forever. But... Well, Ivan was you know, openly stated that he'd, once he won a grand final, he might think about retiring from coaching because that's the, the pinnacle. But I, I suppose he's got, he's got a lot of, you know, unfinished business. A, go back to back or... Uh, and Nathan, well, Nathan, um, they want to lock him up till he's 30. You know, he's only 24 at the moment. Everyone thinks he's so much older, but he's only a baby at the moment. He's got so much growing and so, so much more better, so much better he'll be, which is scary for opponents. So, yeah, lock, lock, lock them up for a lifetime deal and Bring sell, it on, them, baby. sell them the mountains. Sell them the three <laughs> sisters.